Hello my dear friends, how are you? My name is Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about Nordic Germanic transpositions, possible body postures for meditation or to help inducing a trance-like state of mind found in either rock engravings or in metal figurines. As you know, I'm an archaeologist and an historian and also a researcher and in the academic field there is the tendency to avoid a more spiritual approach to explain certain realities found in archaeological excavations. Of course, there is that inclination to say something is ritualistic or religious when we don't have an immediate understanding of what things are. But when it comes to actually explain with examples in the academic field we, t we tend to run away from it because things tend to be much more pragmatic and also prone to find patterns with our modern understandings. So before we start this video I just want to leave a little message to everyone but especially for my colleagues who study ancient human societies. Many modern scientists and a variety of people in the academic field tend to underestimate the old cultures, producing a very trivial idea of their religious beliefs. Because of that, the majority of people has the impression that the main part of the old spiritualities was focused solely in harvest cults and burial ceremonies. Even the myths themselves are interpreted as being mere childish descriptions of life. So the knowledge of ancient societies we have today seems much more to be world interpretations of modern scientists rather than understandings of ancient religions. This happens because we modern humans are not so humble and we think that we progressed from simple and primitive levels of intelligence to a higher scientific state of mind. We think nowadays we have a more advanced and sophisticated way of thinking than our ancestors did. This unconscious way of thinking is the reflection of our worldview completely distorted by materialism and industrialism. There is no reason to believe that we nowadays are on a higher intellectual or spiritual level than our ancestors in ancient times. But much of the ancient knowledge was forgotten, but that doesn't mean our ancestors were idiots. Modern mankind in its industrialized world was forced to focus on material work most of the time, leading to an almost abandonment of the development of the spiritual and the intellectual. Our ancestors were not as primitive as their, in their ways of thinking as we are led to believe. We live in a era absolutely overflowing with information, but we know nothing at all because all of this information is just garbage pushed down our throats and we do not have the time to object to it because we are living in a fast unstoppable wheel of working and working and working and the spare time is spent swallowing more shallow illusions of knowledge provided by the same modern people who are as lost and confused as ourselves. So remember, trying to understand ancient spiritualities by applying our modern religious understandings is a mistake. Making comparisons and trying to find parallels with our modern perceptions of the spiritual and the divine show that nowadays we are much more childish and primitive in our way of thinking than our ancestors. In this way, in a spiritual level, we are not advancing, we are stagnated. All right, let's start with an ecstatic posture, which is probably the simplest to do, the so-called bare spirit posture. It has this name because one of the very first artifacts showing this posture was a Native American wood carving of a human figure in this posture alongside a bear. Although comparing this posture with other figurines around the world, 
and rock engravings. It seems this specific posture has been used for more than 6,000 years. This posture consists in standing up straight with your hands either in your waist or in the abdominal area, breathing in and out slowly. The aim of this ecstatic transposition is to concentrate heat in your body and thus the purpose is to heal the body. I know this not by observing archaeological findings where this posture is represented, but because nowadays this posture is still used by many shamans around the world and after more than 6,000 years we are still using it. The interesting part is that in prehistoric Scandinavia this healing posture was also used and it was depicted in figurines. That's the purpose of this video, showing you that the ancient Norse were not barbaric brutes only concerned with war. That's why I have left that message earlier, because our ancestors were not just concerned with harvests and death. Let's take a look at a couple of examples where the bear spirit position was depicted in the Nordic European area. A male figure found at Gamla, Uppsala, Sweden, almost 3000 years of existence, you can see the same sort of posture depicted in this figure. Maybe this is the depiction of this specific healing position. Our ancestors had a great artistic sensibility and materials, especially metals, weren't acquired so easily. So they made sure to create something with a deep meaning and purpose. The postures depicted in ancient engravings, carvings and metal figurines are not random positions. They have a deep spiritual meaning. Another example, the Iron Age figurine of Snorland in Sweden, depicting the same exact position, standing straight with their hands on the abdominal area. They seem to have an expression of concentration, eyes closed, frowning almost. We can almost imagine another human being in this ecstatic trance posture. The Iron Age uh, figurine found in Denmark, uh, this one would have its hands on the abdominal area but slightly apart from the body, making an arc straight down. Uh, this is another variant of the same healing position still used today mostly in Asian countries, India, Japan, etc. But what's interesting is that this particular position is done with eyes wide open and that's exactly what we have here represented on this Iron Age figurine from Denmark. And of course we have the 9th century gilded silver figure of Freya found in Denmark. She is depicted in the same position with the ants near the waist, not around it but specifically in front of the abdominal area. Sure, we can argue that it might have been easier to forge this kind of posture and so many medieval Nordic figurines and statuettes had this same posture. But I think that is undermining the skills of these craftsmen. Nowadays we, are, we still don't know how our ancestors were capable of creating so many little details and outstanding works of craftsmanship with the technology they had back then. We are talking about figurines no bigger than the tip of a toe and absolutely filled with details. So this Freya representation is not merely because it was easy to depict her like this. This is a healing position, an ecstatic transposition. And let's not forget Freya is the goddess of Seidre, the magical and shamanic practices of the Old Norse. And she herself also is also connected to healing. Spiritual journey. Uh, nowadays if you go on Facebook and search for shamanic groups and pages, people just have to share a couple of phrases or random words on a beautiful or mystical background and that's it. Congratulations, you are a shaman. Well, 
but obviously things are not as simple as that. Spiritual journey requires a deep process of meditation and wondrous varieties of techni techniques, most of which are quite dangerous and that's the entire purpose of it. Near-death experiences to be in contact with the spiritual world. But it's not just about the, the spiritual world on some other unreachable reality. It's also about the spiritual world right here in our own reality. Perhaps this is more evident in Seder, the process of tricking the brain that you are unconscious so it can let you wander about in this reality while in an ecstatic posture and see what in normal circumstances is hidden from us. There are two main feelings when the person has near-death experiences and when the mind and spirit leaves the body. The person either experiences going up or going down. This altered state of consciousness most often uh, gives you the impression of going up towards the sky, leaving your body. And many people have experienced just that, watching their bodies down below as they float around. Naturally, our ancestors left us depictions of this process, such as the Bronze Age rock engravings of Ponum in Sweden. Most of the engravings are representations of the cont contact humans had with the natural world, but in, in a very ritualistic manner. We see depictions of the fertility of animals, male warrior cults, and a great percentage of the engravings is about boats. I would dare to say that the, the main theme is actually ships. Ships were very important in the Norse communities, uh, not just in the early Middle Ages and throughout the Viking Age, as we can see in thousands of ship burials and an entire culture art artistically based on the ship motif. But to the Bronze Age Scandinavians, the boat was everything, not just a means of transportation, but the great majority of the human communities uh, who migrated to Scandinavia in prehistoric times, they did it by boat, and the boat could take them everywhere. There are even depictions of whales, so our ancestors did go far and were exploring the seas at a very early stage of history. Anyway, boats, ships have been greatly linked to the afterlife and there are many myths surrounding the ship motif and the world of the dead, not to mention uh, the actual ship burials. So in this example, one of the many similar examples, we have a person above a boat, not just simply above it, but floating in a 37 degree angle, ascending leaving the boat and going up. Our ancestors did not engrave pictures at random. This figure isn't part of another story or just, or just there because it's cool. This figure is part of the same story as that ship. The ship is empty, it was made to carry that person, and the person is now going up and there is this sense of movement, not going straight up or lying, but in the process of being lifted, awaking in this 37 degree angle I've just mentioned. This seems to be uh, a clear representation of the erection of the body in a spiritual journey, the individual either being dead and going into the afterlife or being a shaman in an altered state of consciousness, visiting the spiritual world. We have another depiction of a spiritual journey. In this story, also a rock engraving from the same place and period. It seems that a person is dead and it's clearly linked to the ship motif, reinforcing the idea of the ship being a vehicle into the afterlife. But this time we have a woman in this story as well. Could this be a figure, a female figure taking care of the body, preparing the body for the funeral ritual? Or a goddess embracing the dead person, welcoming him in the afterlife? After all, the Viking Age dead warriors were welcomed by Valkyries or by Freya if they went to Folkvangre, or if they went to Hell, they were welcomed by the underworld goddess. 
always a female figure. But these are Bronze Age engravings, so I do think that this isn't a dead person after all. It seems to be a lying transposition of a shaman, using the boat as his vehicle to journey into the spiritual world. I'm saying him because there is the representation of a phallus. <laughs> That female figure seems to be his wife, assisting him in the shamanic process. Most of the time this is left behind, but the fact is most shamans have a wife or a husband attending them, helping them during the trance process. This has been found in prehistoric archaeological excavations and shaman women were attended by their husbands and vice versa. During the Viking Age, uh, graves of the Volur, Norse sorceresses and shamans, are accompanied by other female figures who are their attendants, handmaidens, people helping in the spiritual process, and sometimes participating with chanting and invocations. The Osberg ship burial mound seems to be just that, a priestess, a prophetess, maybe a shaman, accompanied by her handmaiden. And let's not forget, in the saga of Eric the Red, the Volva represented in there also has other female attendants helping in chanting and invocations, helping in the preparations for the spiritual work and divination. Speaking of divination, now let's jump to the figurine representing Freire. This is a famous one. Uh, there are many figures of Freyr in the same position, found all over Scandinavia, but especially in southern Sweden. This posture was highly popularized, so it's only natural that throughout the ages Freyr was depicted in the same thinking position, almost as, as if he were meditating. This one might be a little far-fetched, but just take notice at the details. Freyr stroking his beard, a gesture of thoughtfulness, pondering, deep thinking. Freyr is a god related to fertility, hence the depiction of his erected fellows. But before becoming a god related to fertility, he was a warrior deity and a divine ruler, so why not depicting him with a sword and a shield, some martial feature? He is naked in this cross-legged posture, stroking his beard, almost patting it with care. He really seems to be in deep thinking. Could this be a depiction of a posture used for divination purposes? Maybe. We might never know. Another curious position uh, that might represent a transposition is the so-called Allstadt warrior posture. The Allstadt warrior was found in Germany. To be more precise, it's the warrior of Hischlanden, an Iron Age statue of a warrior with his right hand on his waist or, or in the abdominal area and the left arm along the torso and the left hand resting on the right breast. This is an unusual position for a warrior, even if he, if, if he was dead. It's a strange position, but at the same time extremely comfortable, almost as if you were uh, hugging yourself, a sort of protection of your own body. The warrior is naked and he is not concerned with protecting his genitals. So could this be a transposition used by warrior cults? A, a transposition standing straight, almost like the bear spirit position, uh, we have seen previously, but with a martial characteristic. I found no Scandinavian parallels with this one, but I thought it would be interesting to share it with you anyway. Another posture is one depicting an individual with his feet parallel, cupping the hands and placing them at the side of, of the body, waist level, and the arms rounded outward and elbows pointing to either side. We have a couple of examples of this one. Uh, the Nidborgman found in Denmark, the Odin figurine found in Skåne, Sweden, the Bronze Age Vettergotland figure, uh, the Bronze Age uh, Blinking and Vettergotland female figures, etc. <laughs> Could this be the depiction of a trans posture to build up rage and ferocity for battle, or just to create a balance, equilibrium? A healing position, perhaps. 
I honestly don't know, but nonetheless, it's the representation of a position greatly spread all over Scandinavia, possibly depicting a trans posture, greatly used by our Norse ancestors, as we can see by the great quantity of figures in the same position. We have another possible transposition or the representation of a spiritual journey as can be seen in this Bronze Age figure found in Denmark. A female figure making a backward bridge. I'm saying that this might represent a spiritual journey because we have a very similar depiction in Sweden in the rock engravings and this time doing the exact same position but above a ship. Again, this idea of going up and the ship motif connected to the journey of the soul into the afterlife. And finally, to finish this video because it's getting too long, the position depicted in the Freya amulet found in Sweden. Legs and feet spread and arms crossed below the belly with the hands clasping the forearms. This seems to be a sort of position done by pregnant women. The depiction of Freya here seems that she is pregnant. Could this be a trans posture to alleviate some pain caused by pregnancy? Or maybe perhaps to just be at peace and share the moment between the child and the mother? Or is this a position for those initiating in some sort of cult to Freya? It's a curious position, but what caught my attention was the fact that Freya in here seems uh, to be depicted as being pregnant. Maybe it's just a reminder of her being a fertility deity and was in fact an earth goddess before being split in two different goddesses in Scandinavia, Freya and Frigg. But the position is also curious. Maybe this one is not a trans posture, but just a mother holding her baby while still in the womb. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you have enjoyed the background. <laughs> As you know, I am working abroad. So in my spare time, I took the opportunity to make a video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being in there. See you on the next video. And as always, talk for you.